Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Michael SK, and welcome to the second finale that I have to present to you on the Fruit of Grisaia. This finale is Machina's finale. Machina's story will be wrapped up here in this one hour or so special. So, last time, as much as I can remember from literally yesterday, uh, Yuji is still on the run. Machina is in a hospital. Yuji is sticking around in the area for Makina's sake, and Makina is in danger. That danger is that she could still die, and her organs would be transferred over to her sister, and then basically the bad guys would have won. That's how I see it, but I, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. I feel like there's going to be a lot of uh, unexpected shit to go down in this, uh, in this finale, but I guess we'll have to see, so... I hope you guys are ready for this. I'd like to take a minute and uh, say thank you to each and every one of you who uh, continue to watch this playthrough, regardless of the fact that we're past 200 episodes. Holy shit. It's, it's pretty unbelievable, but no, thank you, literally, to all of you guys that uh, like my videos, uh, that watch any bit of my videos, uh, subscribe for this series or others. You guys are amazing, and you guys are the reason that I'm still doing this playthrough. You guys motivate me to keep on going, to keep on reading for your guys' sake, for your guys' entertainment, whatever it may be. So, thank you. Thank you for sticking around, and thank you for being a fantastic audience. It's been a uh, yet another fantastic ride. And I've said this before, I don't know if I'm going to be going into another story, but if I do... I know that there, it, there will be no regrets because I got such a great audience that will be ready to watch and uh, make fun of the fact that I can't pronounce a lot of English and Japanese words, but whatever. Um, and I've said this uh, a few times before, I will be going into the Labyrinth of Grisaia directly after this, so if you're watching this as it comes out, well, good for you. I guess you get to uh, watch some Labyrinth of Grisaia very soon. So, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm also looking forward to the finale here, so I say let's jump into it. I've also been doing some cross-checking. I don't know how this is going to wrap up. I don't know... Uh, I, I feel like there's going to be like a huge-ass choice to make, or choices to make, that lead to a good or bad ending. I don't know what that decision is. I don't know what's going to happen. The only thing I know is the line that's said before it cuts to the credits, because I have to stop recording before the credits hit to avoid the video file from being really stupid when I have to try and edit it. And then I'll record again afterwards if there's an epilogue like there was in Sachi's story. Uh, just, just a lot of complicated shit, no worries about it. I'll probably have a link to the credit scene in the description if you guys really do want to be fully immersed in the story and actually enjoy the credits and the music whatever it may be uh at the end of this so let's jump into it otherwise it's going to be a very long episode uh this is meant to be an hour long but i think it might be more than an hour long i got my cross checking mixed up and or messed up or something so we might be a little off here you guys may be getting a very long video but anyways let's get let's get into it guys one final thank you to each and every one of you for watching any of these Grisaia videos. You guys are fantastic. Alright, <clears throat> let's get into it. About one hour later, I find Matsu... Oh, we're already getting into this. Something like that. Psychiatrix still and quiet. It's already well past visiting hours, so the hospital. That's, that's where we are. As always, there aren't any guards or even observers posted in, in the area. My infiltration consists of slipping in easily through a ground-level emergency exit. I follow a hallway faintly illuminated by the neon glow of the sign above the door. An empty flight of stairs takes me to the third floor, where I make my way toward a secluded private suite. At the very back of the third floor, I glance at the nameplate Irisu Makina, hanging horizontally across the final door then slide it quietly open with no hesitation whatsoever. Ah, uh, damn, dude, I fucking hate hospitals. Like, I've said this before, I've said this whenever Machina was, you know, shown in the hospital here, 
But I hate it when I see someone hooked up like that with the thing in their nose and when they're the heart monitor and fuck, it's just terrible. Hey Machina. I'm back. She won't speak. This might be the last time I see you. What? So I brought your plant today. And well Okay. Sorry, but Oh shit. I've made up my mind to kill your mother. I always read a little bit ahead sometimes, especially with the ellipses, but oh god. Don't worry. I'll pull it off perfectly. I'll set you free. Oh no! My daughter! What? Were you awake? Yeah, that I did. I've been watering it and everything. <laughs> She's talking so slow that it doesn't irritate me, it just emotionally hurts me. Makina, you'd think you can make it out of the front of the station tomorrow evening? By tomorrow evening, everything should be over. So, let's meet up and find ourselves some place to live together. Don't like the idea. Well, Makino, she's not that important. What are you talking about? The hell's with that? I see. So that's how it is. So that's... What's been keeping her alive since they got their hands on her. The bastards. Don't worry. I'll wrap everything up nice and clean. Just be waiting. Tomorrow, at 1800 hours, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, in front of the station, I'll definitely come to pick you up. Yeah, I promise. I don't really know if that's gonna happen, though. I'm pretty sure it isn't going to happen. Back asleep already, huh? Well, now that I've gone and made her a promise, guess I'll have to keep it. If I were to disappear, who'd keep this girl safe? Who's going to protect a girl whose own mother wants to kill her? I wanted to make her into a woman who can stand on her own two feet, even when I'm no longer there to support her. But there's no more time. They've backed us into a corner. All I can do now is finish this as quickly and thoroughly as possible. <coughs> I've sharpened my fangs. I've torn off my collar. Nothing left to do but charge at the enemy and rip out their throat. Changing into a plain workman's uniform from the back of, of my van, I head out onto the highway. The trip to Irisu Global Headquarters takes 40 uneventful minutes. I exit the highway a little early and quietly make my way to a local street that runs along the back of the Irisu Headquarters. Within a few minutes, the service entrance comes into view ahead, marked only by a plain series of guide lights. As Sakura Damon's currently subjecting every vehicle to existence security, to existence, intense 
What am I saying? In extensive security checks before letting it onto the ramp, there's a decent backlog of minivans and trucks lined up waiting to enter. I reach past the AC vent to flip on my hazard lamps, pull one wheel up onto the shoulder so traffic can pass, and queue up at the end of the line. A police officer who had been waiting my approach promptly approaches, his boots slapping noisily against the pavement. He's carrying a binder and ballpoint pen in one hand. With the other, he knocks lightly on my side window. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Even as a sulky frown flashes across my face, I obediently reach down and twist my key in the ignition. Then lower the driver's side window, grab the entry permit sitting on, the, on top of the dashboard, and present it to the officer. The officer accepts the paper, slips it into his binder, cranes his head a little to check my license plate number, then begins scratching away at a form. This part's a gamble. A calculated gamble, but a gamble nonetheless. Over the last few weeks, I've been stealthily visiting the area around Edisu headquarters at irregular moments, probing and observing the security. About a week ago, I realized that a mobile police unit had been placed in charge of inspecting all incoming deliveries. Until then, our people had been in charge, so I'd been forced to keep a worry distance, but... I'm willing to bet some political wrangling about Ichigaya's earlier blunders resulted in the establishment of an extremely superficial joint investigation headquarters, with the cops taking over a few minor jobs like this. This sort of thing is always the brainchild of someone in Kas Kasumi Gaseki, and often results in the cooperating agencies competing in an attempt to show off to said bureaucrat. But even at the best of times, Sakura Damon and my employer are on terrible terms, frequently neglecting to share even crucial information. Healthy rivalries and in-house competition are all well and good, but when things get out of hand and you just end up sabotaging each other, very convenient now that I find myself on the other side. Look, I don't know what you guys are supposed to be looking out for here, but how long is this going to last? We're all busy people, you know. Why do all the policemen in this game sound the same? Tch. Clicking my tongue in irritation, I rest my right hand on top of, of, of the wheel, then lean my upper body over toward the passenger seat and open the glove compartment. Retrieving a light blue pass case, I take out a driver's license and hand it over. Of course, it's just one of the numerous cover IDs my company prepared for me in the days when we were on better terms. The policeman checks the photograph on my license, then looked up to, me to compare it with my own features. Squinting irritably as he shines his flashlight in my eyes, I shove my face forward for examination. Hell yeah, we passed! While carefully accepting the license back, I shoot a quick glance at my rearview mirror out of the corner of my eye. There's already quite a few new arrivals waiting behind my van for their own inspection. One or two of them have begun noisily revving up their engines as if to say, get a move on. Hi, hi. Just wait. Grimacing at the noise, the policeman wedges the binder with my fake entry permit under his arm, then bends down and pokes something that looks like a motorcycle rearview mirror beneath the vehicle, examining the undercarriage. Looks like the foragery of the permit went fairly well at least. Four days ago, I managed to approach one of the trucks lined up here waiting to enter the warehouse. After presenting one of my company IDs, I asked to see their permit, which I then quietly photographed with a digital camera. With those images as a base, I used a PC in a net cafe in Shin Okubo to mock up a falsified document, then pr printed it out in a neighborhood copy shop. Pretty half-assed job. But the cop doesn't seem to have any suspicions at the moment. Yep. Answering in the grouchy tone of a man who's having his time wasted, I reach to the side of my seat and yank up the lever that controls the van's hatchback. As the rear door swings upward with the soft hiss of extending dampers, the policeman sticks his head inside. Opening the lids of the cardboard boxes one after the other, he sticks a hand into the work uniforms packed inside, confirming that I'm not hiding anything suspicious inside. Yeah, that's right. We're in the same boat there, right? Come on, please finish up already. It's gonna be a real pain if you mess up all the merchandise like that. Also, guys, I'm still a little sick. You can probably tell by the sniffling. 
Come on, driver, shut the fuck up. An angry shout from the driver in the next truck cuts through the air. Damn straight, let's get a move on here. If somebody from the company looks into that driver's license number, it's an instant game over. I'd really like to be inside before that happens. <laughs> the officer quickly pushes a small stamp down twice on the document in his binder, then returns my forged entry permit. Narrowing one eye, I accept it with a curt nod. Right, thanks. <laughs> Guess the public center is not all sunshine donuts and fat pensions, huh? Muttering these sympathetic sentiments to no one in particular, I start the van's engine, then guide it smoothly onto the entrance ramp, leading down into the basement of Edisu Global Headquarters. The hell? Music. Just go. Who the fuck is this? <coughs> I'm pretty sure this is Makina's mother's office. Mm. It would kind of make sense now. I hate this bitch. Mm. ケビとは呼べない損失が発生しますが。そうね。全ては私がここにいるのが原因なのでしょうけど。娘のこともあって、今は日本を離れるわけにもいかないし。I <笑> お父様の飛行機は使えるの？はい。明日の午後4時には飛べるよう手配可能です。では、そうしてちょうだい。マキナとサリナ両方連れて行きますから、現地の病院とお母様に連絡を。I'm not sure how that works. 承知いたしました。はあ、お母様へのお見舞いも何か適当に見繕っておいて。いつものように単物でよろしいでしょうか？ そうね。それと、鶴屋の栗まんじゅうも用意しておいてちょうだい。ごぼどう様は、あんこが嫌いだったと記憶しておりますが、確か以前、お土産として月餅をお持ちになられた時に大喧嘩になったかと。もちろん
Thrusting the gun forward threateningly, I use my free hand to remove the cap on my head and spit out the tissue paper I'd stuffed in my cheeks. Miss Sawada's eyes go wide with shock. Wow! I was taught to laugh off a woman's stupidity three times, but that was your last strike. The next time you make a sound, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Apparently sensing something in my dark, sunken eyes, Miss Sawada bites firmly down on her lower lip and proceeds to glare angrily up at me in complete silence. That a girl. I'm gonna borrow this. Holding the gun steady in my right hand, I quickly reach out with my left and pull out a handkerchief that had been peeking out of the secretary's breast pocket. Give me an ah. Uh... <laughs> What's wrong? Open your mouth. Come on. Ah. Uh... Uh... Ugh, you've got no idea how ridiculous you look. <laughs> Just a joke. Don't get angry. Keep your hands on top of the desk. Don't go for the alarm button. I ball up the handkerchief and stuff it into Sawada's mouth, then fix the gag in place with a nylon rope from the box. <laughs> Stand up. Slowly come out from behind the desk, put your knees up on the ground, and hold out your hands behind you. <laughs> Sorry, this might hurt a little, but tough it out. Miss Sawada seems to have decided that resistance would be pointless, as she obediently follows my instructions and waits quietly to be bound. Taking several more cords of nylon rope, I quickly tie her hands behind her back, link her ankles together, and finally connect the two bundles of immobili to immobilize her completely. That posture will probably get a little painful after a while. Why don't you lie down? Slipping my hands under Sawada's armpits, I gently lower her sideways onto the thick carpet. The secretary squirms around a little after being um, appended, but once you're on the ground in this position, it's impossible to get back up on your own power. Ho. Oh. Exhaling quietly, I review every step in the process that brought me here, searching for any potential oversights. Everything's gone pretty much exactly according to plan so far. Once I got inside, it was surprisingly smooth sailing. After following the ramp down to the delivery entrance at the very bottom of the tower, I hauled out the cardboard boxes from the back of my van and began to load them onto a, f a large freight elevator. All well and good that I'd gotten this far, and now I had to come up with some kind of inconspicuous route upward. The final cardboard box in my arms, I was casually glancing in the direction of the emergency exit when I noticed another man in a uniform working nearby. The man loaded a few crates from the panel van he'd presumably driven down here, then wheeled his pallet jack into the elevator and slipped into the corner of the cage. You not getting in? Taking the man's question as my cue, I followed him into the elevator and, with almost disappointing ease, found myself rising to the third floor warehouse. My new colleague took off his hat and offered a brief greeting to the manager, then wheeled his delivery off into the, ma into the maze of shelves with the easily famili familiarity of a man in his own home. I imitated the man's slight bow toward the manager, then followed him into the depths of the warehouse with a nonchalant expression on my face. A little way inside, I stopped and took out a notebook from the pocket of my uniform, pretending to double-check where I needed to stow my packages. Soon enough, the other man finished his own delivery and headed back out. Instead of riding the freight elevator back down, the delivery man simply said, Can you get the door, please? In response, the manager pressed a button to unlock a door leading to an external emergency staircase. The man nodded his thanks and slipped outside. Probably needed to go down a floor to get some documents signed. After briefly considering the matter, I decided to make some or to make use of the emergency stairs myself. A single sentence to the manager got me outside, but instead of heading downstairs, I climbed to the fourth floor, where an inviting door offered access to an internal evacuation staircase. The problem was opening it. An emergency exit is only intended to open one way. For obvious reasons, they're designed not to be accessible from the outside. But I haven't spent years on the Ichigaya payroll for show. I was taught a method that can get you inside one of these with a bit of delicate fiddling. A little time consuming, but almost always works. However, even if it was possible to unlock the door, I couldn't just swing the thing carelessly open. An emergency exit of this sort has an alarm device active by default. The instant it opens, an ear splitting bell goes off, and building security will instantly be contacted. As a countermeasure, I used a classic trick, deceiving the alarm with a bit of aluminum foil. I took Machina's pack of grape flavored Bubble King from my pocket, unwrapped one stick, and popped it into my mouth. 
Folding the wrapping paper into a flat sheet, I stuck the piece of gum onto it as an adhesive and fixed it over the alarm sensor. After a few minutes of work on the door, I slipped quietly into the deserted evacuation staircase and without further difficulty made my way up to the 12th floor. Now it's just a matter of getting into the president's office. But... Whoops, that was a bit sloppy. Now that I look carefully, there's a fingerprint scanner next to the heavy wooden door in the back, with an LCD screen displaying LOCK in red letters. Come to think of it, Miss Sawada here had to unlock the door for me last time I visited. Should have had her open it before I tied her up. Now what? I glance back at the secretary lying on the ground with her body arched back like a shrimp, only her face pointing this way. I always just chop off a finger, but that's a bit much. Your, boy your boyfriend would go limp with guilt every time you try a hand job, right? Can't have that. <laughs> That's true, you can't have that. Pushing my gun into the belly of my work uniform, I haul Miss Sawada up off the thick rug. <laughs> Pipe down. I'm just gonna borrow your finger for a second. Don't make too much noise, or I'll just snip one of that. Or off. One off with that pair of scissors on your desk. <laughs> Lifting Sawada over my shoulder, I bring her to the door and guide the index finger of her right hand to the scanner. Okay, thanks. We're good now. Gently lowering the secretary back to the floor, I firmly grab hold of the doorknob. Door... wait, what? Do or die time. I said doorty time. I was like, what the fuck? Possibly both. Pardon me. Kazumi Yuji reporting in. <laughs> Irisu Kiyoka's eyes open wide with shock. A deep-fried okaki cracker, or whatever, freezing halfway to her mouth. Snacking in the middle of the night? You're gonna put on weight, you know. I glance briefly at the corner of the ceiling. The surveillance camera's acti activity light isn't on. I'm willing to bet Irisu Kiyoka deliberately turned the thing off to keep her midnight snack private. Why are you here? Wait. Why are- okay. I was like, did I read that right? <laughs> How did you get in? Women always ask the same questions. I pull the small handgun out of my work uniform. My previous visit made it clear that further discussion is pointless. Today, I've come to eliminate you as a threat to Irisu Makina. <laughs> Sorry. Not interested. Talking just makes the trigger heavier. I should have shot this woman dead the moment I saw her. I've already made this harder than it needed to be. Don't falter, Yuji. Pull the trigger. Now, before the momentum fades. <laughs> Sensing my momentary hesitation, hesitation, blah, 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 Kiyoka leaps forward, aiming for the door behind me. Damn it! As the woman tries to slip past my side, I swing my arm in a vicious arc, slamming the butt of the pistol into her temple. Her body jerks backward. I sweep her legs out from under her, and she tumbles to the ground. <laughs> Damn, dude. Now we got the upper hand. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that I did. Tell me something. Did your parents ever hit you? <coughs> Figured as much. That explains a lot. That's a delusion. An egotistical fantasy. Your parents guided you around every bump of the road. And when you tripped over your own feet, you found someone else to blame. You've lived your life in denial of your own shortcomings. You were a chauffeur down a life others set out for you. Never spanked, never frustrated, never knowing pain. That's why you turned into a woman who could sacrifice her own daughter without so much as a twinge of conscience. <laughs> oh, I understand. My father was the same way. The old man was a waste of space who spent most of his life eating through his inheritance. When he screwed up, or things took a bad turn, he'd take it out on the people around him. He knocked me around to forget his troubles. Oh shit. Thought every other person in the world was trash. Any living thing that he couldn't use to his advantage was worthless. 
didn't even see us as human beings. Pissed him off just to look at us. This ringing any bells? You've got the same disease. There's no curing it now. If I don't kill you, Makina will die. But you're like the the head. You're the one who really wants her dead. That's not relevant. If anyone else comes to kill her, I'll eliminate them one by one as many times as it takes. <laughs> わかったわ。取引をしましょう。私を殺さないでくれるなら、私もマキナを殺しません。ふーん。そ、そうだ。なんだったらあなた、マキナと結婚する。あんなわけのわからない組織で使い捨てにされるより、ずっといい暮らし
you know? Like, I, I, I'm really against him shooting. That's why, like, when I heard, you know, assassinate in the previous episode or the episode before or whatever, I was like, no, there's no way he'd do that. There's no way. I don't know. If we don't pull the trigger, we would have to believe what she's been saying here that, you know, everything will be all right. Uh, you know, she'll, she'll leave us alone. Machina won't die. She'll apologize. It'll all be over. But then what, what was all of this? We're finally here. We can end this. I'm not really sure what to do here because they kind of have like a pro and con. Like we, we came all this way. Are are we not going to do it? What if, what if it's all a lie? What if she's just like, ah, psych, I got you. And now Machina's going to die. You're going to die. It's all over. Ah, <sighs> fuck. Well, I think that's going to be the risk we're going to have to take. Because I don't think it's right for Yuji to kill. Regardless of the fact that we're here now, after all this shit that we've gone through, that we're here now, we can finally kill her after all the shit she put Machina through, and Yuji, of course. I just don't think it's righteous to kill her. Threatening her, I think we've done enough. I guess we'll see if she really is going to live up to what she just said. We won't pull the trigger. Yeah. That's right. This woman's not worthy to be called a mother, but... There's still parent and child. And when you kill your parent, even if they're the scum of the earth, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. God damn it. It's no good. Now I'm remembering. I can't kill. <sighs> it's no good. I'm no good after all. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do a fake laugh. What a joke. What a complete goddamn joke. What the hell am I doing? Falling flat onto my backside on the spot, I explode into roars of laughter. <laughs> it's the briefest of chances, but Itisu Kiyoka seizes it. As I laugh with the deranged bitterness of a man who's given up on the world itself, the woman's hand leaps for the alarm button under her desk. And in that moment, I really, truly don't give a damn about her, about myself, about anything in the world. There are hurried footsteps in the corridor within seconds, the sound of someone bursting into the secretary's office. Guess that's that. Well, for a piece of shit like me, I guess it was a pretty respectable showing. The thought fills me with something like re resignation. My throbbing heart slows. The red-hot flame in the center of my mind grows cold and still. The guards in the office outside are throwing their bodies against the door, aggravated by its refusal to open. For some reason, their obvious irritation strikes me as somewhat amusing. Oh shit, we're gonna fucking die! So they're gonna break out the master key, huh? Guess that means... They're probably not our people. Well, not that I particularly care at this point. It's a simple trick. Take a shotgun with a massive 12 gauge ammunition and blast away the upper and lower hinges on the left in the area by the lock. Not pretty, but it opens just about any door, hence the nickname. Makes sense. Soon enough the doors smash violently inward. A man in black bursts into the room shoulder first, leading with one leg like a charging martial artist, his automatic pointed to the ground. <laughs> uh, what about our deal? I see. They're going to turn me into a terrorist, huh? JB must have been the one who prepared that scenario. Wonder if I'll be in for- uh, Wonder if it'll- if I'll be from the north or the east. Well, probably the north. <laughs> Drop my weapon, he says, and 
Unfortunately, I already tossed my gun on the floor before you even came in, Rambo. Why the hell would I bother fighting back this late in the game? Just dispose of me of however you like. You see, I don't think we'd be making that promise regardless, because I don't think Makina can walk. And even if, if we shot her, I'm pretty sure people are going to be fucking alerted and we're going to die. Ah, shit. That's right. I promised Makina, didn't I? Sorry, kid. I screwed up. Don't think I'll be able to come pick you up. I really am sorry, Makina. Out of selfishness, I would have killed her, but I feel like we did the right thing regardless. Let's I don't know what ending we got here or what ending we're going to get. Let's just keep going, guys. The two security police have already placed themselves between me and Irisu Kiyoka, completely sheltering her body. Wouldn't think the woman was bawling like a baby a minute ago. The instant she's standing behind someone's back, her voice gets a lot louder. That side of you really does remind me of my old man. <laughs> a weak laugh, tinged with self-mockery, pushes its way out of my lungs. The largest of the SP officers reaches out to restrain me. Probably locking to grab my wrist, or looking to grab my wrist, yank it behind my back, then press my chest to the floor with his knee. Ugh. The instant that massive baseball mitt of a hand seizes my right wrist with bone-crushing force, I reflexively try to pull it free. Ugh. Circling behind me, the man strikes the side of my head with a three-stage extendable baton. A, ting a tingling warmth. Spreads in the back of my nose. That attitude pisses me off. He has power. I have none. I'm not even resisting. He still knocks me around. That's perfectly normal to him. Comes as naturally as breathing. And all of a sudden, it makes me very, very angry. My right hand twists instinctively in his grip. I lean back. Sh Wait, what the fuck is happening? I lean back, shifting my weight to my waist, pushing myself up off the ground, and I jerk his wrist sharply upward as I turn to face him. God. God. Uh, an interesting turn of events. Oh. Even as I exhale the air in my lungs through pursed lips, my left hand reaches for the man's eyes, but he's ready for it. His baton falls to the ground. His open hand catches my wrist. Come on. We've, get, we've each got a hold of a wrist now. It's become a contest of strength. Against a muscle monster like this, a simple grappling match isn't going to end well. With a small twitch of my captured wrist, I abruptly let the muscles in my arm go slack, no longer resisting his attempt to overpower me. The man's torso lurches forward, destabilizing his body's center of gravity. I don't give him a chance to regain his balance. Guiding his arm up and over my shoulder, I step forward, trying to use the weight of his unbalanced upper body as leverage for a throw. I don't even know how the fuck this is all happening. Know how to plant yourself before you wreck yourself. But guys who've done judo are seriously difficult to uproot. Abruptly changing tactics, I release my grip on his left wrist with a little jerk to the side. Again, taken by surprise, he waves his hands in circles like a beginner on a balance beam. SP2? Oh no. As I move to tackle my opponent, the SP who'd been hanging back to guard Itisu Kiyoka lunges at me from behind. Quickly twisting around as we tumble across the floor, I lift my legs into the air, then push forward off my back and drive my toes into the onrushing officer's gut. It's kind of shit you'd probably see in movies. Using the backlash from my kick, I roll forward over the stomach and chest of the man who collapsed with me. The momentum carries me to the to my feet above the prone policeman. I instantly drop my knee down onto his throat like a blade of a guillotine. Oh god. Maintaining the pressure, I frantically search for the gun I abandoned earlier, but it's already been kicked into a corner of the room. Much too far for me to reach out and grab. Need a weapon. The man pinned underneath my knee seems a, a good option. 
But when I flip back his jacket, there's no gun strapped to his armpit. Must be a hip holster. Clicking my tongue in irritation, I reflexively grab the golden ballpoint pen peeking out from the breast pocket of his Oxford short Look out. shirt. Look out. The third of the Itasu Kyoka's defenders brings his shotgun to bear. Oh god, we're done. You wanna shoot? Go ahead. I grab the man underneath me by the back collar of his suit and tumble away, pulling his body with me as a human shield. So. Doesn't matter if you've got a rifled slugs or double O buckshot at this range, there's no way for him to shoot me without killing his comrade as well. No one from Sakura Damon would ever make that choice. In the first place, not relying on firearms except when strictly necessary is a point of pride in that organization. That said, I've got three opponents. One of them may be out of the picture, but if I just sit here, the others will subdue me. What do I do? That sounds fucking lovely. While I'm stalling, the man I knock down with a kick to the solar plexus totters to his feet. There's no more time to hesitate. What do I do? As my eyes dart around the room, I tighten my grip on my human shield's collar, bending his body backward like a bow against my knee, or a bow against my knee. And in that moment, something slips out of his jacket and tumbles noisily onto the floor. CS, huh? It's a palm-sized spray can. Spray can. <laughs> Almost looks like a plain black bottle of deodorant at a glance, but the contents are without a doubt. I am not pronouncing that. In other words, tear gas. I quickly pick up the can and fire a blast into the face of the approaching officer. Man, I knew tear gas did quite a bit in Grand Theft Auto, but man, this is another story. Although it's... Oh, shit. <laughs> I accidentally pressed space bar. I didn't know that actually hid everything, what the fuck? Although it certainly seems effective, it's not the kind of CS my company would be using. The chemical sprayed out is a diffused mist, but... Uh, so it can't be used against distant opponents. Ah, I had to get a drink of water there. But the gas, riding the currents of the room's air conditioning, begins to flow toward Itasu Kiyoka and her third guard. Struck, her, struck suddenly by a plan of sorts, I jab the golden ballpoint pen in my hand into the slide of the spray cam with all my might. I instantly cover my nose and mouth with the cuff of my work uniform. Tears are already pouring from my eyes in streams. Pulling out from the, pulling out the pen from the canister, I hurl the little gas grenade at the man with the shotgun. <laughs> Probably acting on pure instinct as an SP officer, the man throws Edisu Kiyoka to the ground, covering her body protectively with his own. <clears throat> now, I leap to my feet, mouth buried in, my, in the crook of my arm and bolt for the door. On the verge of escaping, I notice a large tabletop lighter in the shape of a goddess on the reception desk and reach out to grab it. <laughs> There's the sound of a shotgun being pumped behind me. Now that I've left my shield behind, he has no reason to hold back. <laughs> Who the fuck's this halt anymore? Ugh. No. Oh, okay, right shoulder. An impact to my right shoulder like the blow of a giant's hammer. My field of vision is instantly dyed in shades of red. The bone-shattering shock travels through my skeleton, shaking my skull violently. The 12-gauge blast is powerful enough to explode... Uh... uh, uh ca cap... Capil I don't know what that word is. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm drawing a lot of blanks tonight. Across the right half of my body, blood forced, uh, <coughs> blood forced out of its vessels gather in my eye. Tumbling forward through the door, I instinctively try to push myself up off the thick carpet, but my right arm's completely powerless. I collapse awkwardly to the floor. Ugh. <coughs> Lifting myself up a little with pure ab abdominal strength, I reach over to the right to my right shoulder, or what's left of it. The muscle and flesh are simply gone. My fingers sink easily into a massive wound. That's fucking terrifying. It's fine. I won't die. There's no real reason to believe that, but unless I convince myself it's true, I'm going to fall to the ground and lie there paralyzed. It's fine. This is nothing. Just a scratch. Human beings don't die that easily. There's no problem here. Repeating the words in my mind like a mantra, I gather my willpower into a swirling vortex deep inside my gut. Stand up! 
I force my knees to push my body erect, but my legs shake like those of a newborn foal. I can't get to my feet. From behind the sound of a shotgun being pumped, cold dread shoots through my spine. Looking over my shoulder, I find the man with the gun scrubbing his eyes vigorously with the scuff of his suit as he hacks and wheezes painfully. He's in no shape to line up a shot, but at this range, even a blindly fired warning shot could easily kill me. I bite down on my lower lip fiercely, enough to draw blood, willing, to my, willing my convulsing legs to support my weight, begging myself to stand. I've got to hurry. Pack up might arrive any minute. I have to get out of here now. Leaning heavily against the wall, I rise to my feet, slowly, painfully, I leave the president's office behind, the cigar lighting goddess tucked under my arm. Just be patient, Machina. I'll definitely come to pick you up. Reaching the passage, I hold the statue up to the fire alarm above and bathe it in a small blast of flame. Every emergency door in the building will be automatically unlocked when the fire alarm goes off. With this done, I can slip into and out of any floor. After pushing my way out onto the emergency staircase through the exit with the sensor I disabled earlier, I jam the enormous lighter in between the handrail and the door's lever, rendering it impossible to open from the inside. Got to get this patched up somewhere. Maybe the gunshot was too large a trauma to process, but it doesn't really hurt at the moment. Some part of my brain's probably decided I'd die of shock if I became aware of the pain. I swear to God, the world's too damn round. It's impossible to walk straight. Propelling myself from one near fall to the next on trembling legs, I flee into the night. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, hiyo, Kiara. What the hell was all of that? That was crazy, dude. We almost killed a woman and we almost died. We almost got arrested. Probably not even arrested. Like, I don't know what that was going to lead to. Probably just rape. Ah, <laughs> so I guess they know. They know what went down? Oh, I can't tell. You all look the same as uh, episode one. まあ、羨ましい。あなたね。そりゃあなたはいいわよ。午前0時を過ぎた時点で交代になって家に帰ってシャワーを浴びてビール飲んでラーメン食べて寝たんでしょ。そりゃ太るわよ。Damn, dude. あなたの行動なんか簡単に予想できるわよ。私が何年この仕事やってると思ってるの？いやだな。まさか私の部屋にカメラとかマイク仕掛けてないですよね。なんであんたなんかの監視のために貴重な1%枠を割かなきゃい
9029号が生きてたらいいなとか肩を持つ発言をしたわけじゃないですよ。はあ、she does care。わかってるわよ。でも本当、どこへ行っちゃったんですかね。帰る場所なんてないのに。イリスマキナの病院は誰かうちの人間は張り付いているのい,いえ誰もイリスケからも何の依頼もありませんし彼女もずっと病院で眠ったままでこれからどうなっちゃうんでしょうさあねイリスキヨカは今日の4時の飛行機で海外へ渡るそうよ Only Serena、ね、Only Serena マキナは置いてけぼりですか9029の死亡が確認できないうちは不活にタッチできないんじゃないああうちの9029はしつこいですからねもし海外に逃げたとしてもしつこくどこまでも追いかけてくるでしょうねんえっと何でしたっけそんな9029号を揶揄した言葉がありましたよね What is tenacity? 9029に狙われるということはキレの悪いクソに悩まされるようなものだ。でしょああ、that's, that's hella unfortunate then。それは12年前にキューバの麻薬カルテルの幹部が先代の9029に対して言った言葉よ。いくつ代が変わろうと9029は恐怖のナンバーですよ。エースナンバーってやつです。いつかは。私も9029のケースオフィサーをすることになるんですかねそうねもし東大の9029の死亡が確認されて次代の9029にナンバーを引き継いだとしたらその時はあなたに預けてもいいわよ I was gonna say like ooh but at the same time that means Yuji would be dead あ本当にでも自信ないな歴代の I9029 号って言えば命令無視に公明に不服従いつだって管理官を泣かしてきたって言いますしねいいじゃない程よくダイエットできるわよなんか先輩見てると人より早く老けそうで嫌だなバーディーキアラスのベストそれってどういう意味かしらね Please I'm just, I'm just hoping there's a route for her or something, just a little bit of story in the, in the labyrinth of Grisaya. Like, please. Oh, 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 お願いえー、本日の午前6時30分イリス・マキナの意識が回復したようですおおそうよかった当人の意識はまだだいぶ混濁しているようですがバイタルは極めて安定しているようです<笑>よかったですねそうね後で今回の件の報告も兼ねてお見舞いに行ってくるわバームクーヘン持ってそうバームクーヘンを持ってね。Not that I took Kiara's frivolous banter seriously or anything, but I do stop at a western style cake shop near Idisu Makina's hospital to buy a bao. I just heard this word and I can't pronounce it prior to my visit that afternoon. When I return to my car, the one seg broadcast of my navigation system is still buzzing with reports concerning the attempted assassination at Idisu Global HQ last night. The contents of the stories are more or less the same, no matter what channel I flip to. The crime was the work of a terrorist group of unknown nationality. The ringleader and would be assassin was quickly overpowered by special, special police guarding the building, but attempted suicide. And although he was immediately rushed to the hospital, his death was confirmed in the ambulance prior to his arrival. It's a shoddy hack, hacknide? Hacknade? I don't know what that word that is. I don't know what kind of word that is, but whatever. Bit of embro embroidery. But for some reason, that's just the sort of win window dressing the organism known as the public is most eager to swallow. Most likely because a story full of holes offers more opportunity to carp out or carp about the government's response. It's more entertaining that way. One morning talk show is quickly arranged for a special panel discussion. 
featuring an economic analyst who's become popular or a popular early morning talking head recently. Along with a military com com God damn it, I'm messing up every time commentator who's made a name for himself through comically strident anti-American ravings, frequent opponents currently engaging in a vigorous spit-spewing exchange of ideas. With a quiet snort, I pick up the nav system's remote control and flip from the one seg broadcast back to the GPS screen. Mass media targeted embroidery type A plan B. The scenario I prepared is per meeting into the public dis discourse, much as anticipated. In 20 days, a pre-planned shake-up of the Ministry of Justice will become the new hot topic of the moment, and for the majority of the citizenry, this incident will be bundled off into a dusty corner of their memory. This chain of incidents has reached a tentative conclusion, but there's still the mystery of I-9029's current whereabouts. She is awake. Ah. And one other problem. Simultaneously, the most trivial and the most crucial element of this case also remains unresolved. A mother who fled overseas, leaving her daughter in a hospital as though abandoning a broken toy she'd grown bored of. The question of how Irisu Makina will be dealt with interests me greatly. The girl hasn't simply been left behind by an indifferent mother. There's only a superficial part of the truth. It would be more accurate to say that we've used the confusion to take control of her as a potential material witness. It proves a wise bet. In compensation for a full accounting of events that took place last night, Irisu Makina offers me extensive details concerning the Irisu clan's past history of corruption and criminal misconduct. The information in her verbal statement is astonishingly precise, proof that her memories of the family's secret record books remain vivid and clear down to the minute minutest detail, or whatever. And so, in the form of a young woman, our organization obtains the Edistu Clan's Book of the Dead, a prize worthy of all we spent in its pursuit. The knowledge I gained this afternoon alone will be more than sufficient a bargaining chip to seal the Edistu's lips concerning 9029's misconduct, with the addition of one more document to the most classified files of the secret organization known as the CIRS. We'd immediately extend a guarantee of personal security to our newest resource. <laughs> I want to open a store. The, the, the bakery. That's, that's what she wants to do in life. Her eyes are open wide and I know she's fully alert, but for the last little while the girl's simply been staring at the apple seedly sitting by the window with a dopey look in her eyes. Perhaps it would have been best to conceal the fact that Kazumi Yuji disappeared after suffering grave injuries. In combination with his failed assassination of Makina's own mother, this shock might even prove powerful enough to trigger a relapse of her prior aphasia? The girl no longer has any such thing. Her mother and sister have gone overseas in search of an organ donor. Her own family wanted her dead. Under such circumstances, who can she possibly return to? There's only one possible answer to my question. Her father in heaven? Or that domesticated dog of ours who seems to have fallen off the face of the earth. Well, I suppose it really has to be the <laughs> it really has to be the latter. Well, he's got a hole in his shoulder now, so that's probably not happening. Yakusoku. So, Yakusoku. Takara. 
もう大丈夫なのよ放っておいてくれれば私パパと一緒にずっと一緒に二人で暮らすからそう A lonely girl in a hospital bed, dreaming of an ephemeral future. Someday the prince will come and carry her away. She truly believes that. And in time, the day will come when she can look back on that dream with nostalgia. With this little、uh, soliloquy running through my head, I leave Idisu Makina's hospital room behind. The evening of that same day, I learn that she slipped out of her bed and disappeared quietly from the hospital. All right. Oh, shit. Papa, it's a little bit. Well, 12 minutes, according to that clock we just saw. I mean, it seemed like a nightmare. パパになってもらったこともすべてが夢だったんじゃないかってそんな風にも思えるでもこうして私の手にはリンゴのナイフは残った I will forever think that things are pain in the ass だとしたらパパの存在も夢ではなかったんだって信じたかっただって約束したのよ約束したものだから絶対来るよパパは絶対に来るだってパパは一度も約束を破ったことないもん Well I guess things change だから私はこうして待ち合わせの約束の駅で植木鉢を抱えてパパを待つもう約束の時間を少し過ぎているし何人も行き交う駅前の人が不思議そうな顔をして私を見ていくけどそう私は人を怖がったりなんかしない。She's talking too damn slow. I feel like she's gonna be terribly disappointed. Oh shit! Machina! Oh, I was, I was gonna say. Sorry. Guess I'm a little late. You wait long? I see. My bad. Also, I'm sorry. I told you I'd put an end to everything, but I couldn't pull it off. Well, so we think. Yeah, sounds good. Let's do that. Good question. Any place you want to go, Makina? Huh? I don't know how she was able to get released from the hospital. I, mean, I was just thinking of that. So we go to the beach. And then what? What else? 
犬と遊びたいそれと自転車の乗り方を教えてほしいな Oliver dreams or wishes What do those have to do with the beach? <laughs> so that me? Well, it's fine. We've got the money. I haven't touched that 70 million yen you gave me. You can do anything at all. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's close to Daytona. Florida, huh? That's a nice place. Gotta watch that Daytona 500. <laughs> I'm not sure about that last part. Sounds appealing. I'm a big fan of both. I like that. Hell, we'll get you a puppy and a bicycle too. And at night, we can go out and play with fireworks. And, well, let's see. What else? We've still got plenty of money. Makina, what do you want to do? I see. Papa? Hmm? What is it? Oh, what the fuck? So we're dying. Yep. Truth is, I screwed up a bit, but it's fine. It doesn't hurt that much. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you got that first hand experience. Yeah. Might be. It's getting hard to keep my eyes open. Feels like I'm gonna fall asleep. Unless I keep talking. No. Papa? Alright guys, welcome back. I uh, just got done watching the credits. Uh, we're on What Waits Beyond Darkness. I don't know if this is the epilogue or whatever, but apparently it's one year later. So what just happened from what I understand, Yuji just died. I think. Or he lost a lot of blood to the point where he really passed out. So yeah, we're one year later, and like I said at the beginning of this session, I, I just can't show the credits, I'm sorry. But anyways, yeah, one year later. <laughs> but is he alive? Damn, dude. お店を始めて最初の頃は日本人がやくパン屋ということで、あまりお客さんは多くなかった。それでも最近はお客さんも少しずつ増えてきて、私の焼くメロンパンを楽しみにしてくれている馴染みのお客さんもできた。もし。私一人だったら、ここまで来ることもできなかったし、お店を始めようとも思わなかっただろう。私には私を助けてくれる人が思った以上にたくさんいて、多くの人に助けられて、その中でも一番感謝しているのは。Jesus Christ。Oh shit, Yuji's alive! Oh my god! Morning, Makina. Damn, dude, Yuji looking fucking fly as hell. Yeah, I've been sleeping a lot better lately. 
Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, you know that day from just like literally a year ago. <laughs> to hear JB tell it, I'm not a sweet enough mutt to roll over and die that easily. What? He lost his right arm? Oh shit, dude. Well, what are you gonna do? The bones and muscle in my shoulder were totally pulverized, so the arm was basically dangling off a bit of skin. And I knew it was go I knew it was gone the instant I got a decent look. When I was changing clothes in the station bathroom after being shot, I even considered just ripping the thing off and leaving it behind. Decided against it though. No reason to give some poor janitor a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, I probably would have... I probably would have either passed out or threw up constantly. True enough. Sorry about that. It's fine. Feels like a bit of a lucky break, if anything. Small price to pay for a divorce from the devil. Yeah, I'm actually starving. Alright, my daughter. Hello, this is Mekino speaking. Oh, did they actually move to Florida? Oh, shit. What? ライフル化してやっから私まだ朝ごはんも食べてないのよあなたねそんなもの私なんて食べてないわよいいから準備するのまったくもうどうして九丸二九五はいつも言うこと聞かない子が襲名するのかしらわあそうカリカリすんなよ
カラッとしてて湿度が低いから玉もよく飛ぶしきっと一発で当たるよね新しい町で新しい仕事として店を始めそして私は重度負傷で退役したパパの代わりに新しいアルバイトを始めた全てがこれまでの私にはなかったもので慣れないうちは戸惑うことも多いけれど私は今の生活に満足しているそうとても満足しているこれまでの人生ではろくなことがなかったような気がするけれど今は自分にできることが多くなったせいか毎日が楽しいそしてきっと明日もそのまた先もずっとずっと毎日楽しいに違いないとそう思えることが幸せだったこの穏やかな生活を守るのが今の私の一番の目標9021現着確認したたった一言ですぐに回線が切られるのにも慣れたこの幸せな生活を守るにはやらなければいけないことがたくさんあるでも大丈夫今日はまだ頭は痛くないさて頑張りますかそう自分に言い聞かせて見上げた空にはカモメの群れが飛んでいた私はかけていたサングラスを外しポケットから出した目薬を差しながら静かに打ち寄せる波の音を聞いた心のまどろむ平和な音だった The fuck was that? Alright. Uh, well. Uh, hold up, hold up. Let's. Hold up. Where can I go to verify? Uh, I have no idea where I can go to verify that we did the, uh. The correct. The correct thing. I think that was the good ending. I want to say that that was the good ending. But I have no way of telling. I'm. I'm pretty sure that was the good ending. I. Why. Why are those pink? I think those are the. The ones with hentai. Alright. Uh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. That was the good ending. Because. I mean, everything kind of just worked out, you know? And the, and the reason why I brought it back to the loading screen was so the frames wouldn't get messed up. But anyways. Holy shit, guys. This was longer than an hour. Um, Alright. I I, I'm, I'm going to take like four or five minutes to uh, just state my opinions. The story was great. It didn't beat Sachi's story, but it came to... A very nice conclusion. Um, it, it's great to see that Makina has inherited a lot of characteristics from Yuji, and not in any sort of bad way that we've been seeing uh, as a sort of joke uh, throughout her route, and I think in the common route as well. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I think it's kind of cliche how uh, you know she took over for him and everything like that. Uh, you know, one year later, and they're able to, you know, achieve her dream. She's owning the bakery already. I don't know. And I think that's... I, I, I'm, I'm not really sure how I feel about the, uh, the whole, uh, what was it? Ah, you know what? I, I totally lost my train of thought there. Oh, well. Um, either way, uh, I, I guess everything wrapped up nicely. I honestly wonder how the bad route, or the, the bad ending... Uh, would have resulted but thinking about the choices it's now two times where 
the good ending came out of choices that you wouldn't think they would come out of. It's like doing the thing that you would think wouldn't help. Like with Sachi, you know, she was feeling all that shit from her mother, allegedly, so, uh, you know, we had the option to kill her, and it's like, yeah, okay, kill her, and, you know, we're good. Uh, you know, no more issues, but I, I guess that's not what you're supposed to do. There, there's more behind it, I guess, and I guess there is more behind, you know, not shooting uh, Machina's mother. It would have created it, like, Yuji wouldn't be who he was in the end of this story. Plain and simple. I'm also really happy to see that we're not a father, I just, just realized that, but it was a great story. I think Sachi's was a thousand times better, because, you know, Sachi is waifu. Um, oh, I thought it was kind of dumb how, uh, this is what I was trying to say earlier, I thought it was kind of dumb how, um, the entire, the entire other cast, the, the other students, they're kind of just, like, left in the dust. I'm kind of disappointed by that. There's really, like, no, like, okay, now we can go home and return to that normality. It's like, no, we have to live another life. We have to live a completely different life. We're in Florida now. I'm not really fond of that, but that's just me. Regardless, this was, this was fun. This was great. I had a lot of fun recording this, and I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. Um, I don't know whose story I'd do next, if I do another story, but... I think I said it would actually be Sakaki. Kind of want to explore her a little bit more. But I'm, a I'm avoiding Amine for obvious reasons. Uh, and Michidu is Michidu. But I'm not going to think of that. I'm just going to look forward to playing the Labyrinth of Grisaya. And uh, getting more of that thick, thick story. So thank you very much for watching, guys. If you, if you made it this far, I'm honestly really shocked. But... <laughs> If you made it this far, I, I congratulate you and I thank you very much for, for watching. It's It's been a fun ride. It's been another fun ride. and um, Like I said, I'm glad this story wrapped up as clean as it did. So, with that being said, I guess this is where we'll end it. So, quite a bit of an episode here. Quite long. You guys are welcome. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you very much for watching Machina's story here, the Fruit of Grisaya. I guess next time in the Fruit of Grisaya, if there is a next time, we'll be going down another route. Well, it'll probably be Sakaki's. We'll have to see. But next up on my agenda is playing the Labyrinth of Grisaya. Again, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this, leave a like, subscribe, all that. There'll be more Grisaya content to come. Again, thank you very much for watching. My name is Michael SK, and this has been The Fruit of Grisaya. The second finale, Machina's story has ended. Thank you very much, yet again, for watching. I'm very thankful. And this is goodbye for now with The Fruit of Grisaya.